Good morning everyone, this is Mr. Leo Labrage and today we're going to have um, a very important topic in Fundamentals of Nursing and this is Surgical Wound Dressing. Before you watch the video on the actual demonstration of wound dressing, it's very important for you to learn what are the basic concepts of surgical wound dressing. And in this video, you will learn what are the important points that you need to remember in performing surgical wound dressing. Okay, what is a surgical wound? A surgical wound is a cut through the skin that is made during surgery. We call it a surgical wound. And surgical wound is normally performed to treat, to cure, to alleviate symptoms, and to diagnose certain diseases. For example, in the video that you are watching now, you would see that the first photo shows a surgical wound is created in order to, to treat a fracture. Okay? And the second one, you would see a surgical wound on the chest of the patient. Perhaps the doctor performs surgical um, removal of certain um, organs inside it or repair. And the third one is the abdominal surgery and you would see a surgical wound on the top of the abdomen. Perhaps the patient is experiencing abdominal pain or perhaps the patient has abdominal mass that requires to be repaired or to be removed. We call it a surgical wound. Now, why a surgical wound dressing is performed if a patient has a surgical wound? Surgical wound is very prone to infections. Okay? And since it is very prone to infections, it is our duty as a nurse to make sure that the patient's wound is protected against microorganisms or else it will be infected. And one of the most important things that we do in order to, pr to, pr to, to prevent infection is to perform surgical wound dressing. Surgical wound dressing has two purposes. The first one to prevent growth of microorganisms. Remember, there's a break in the skin and it would be very easy for the microorganisms to get into the wood. So by surgical wound dressing, we are preventing those from happening. And the second one is promote healing, okay? Cleaning of the wound regularly foster wound healing by primary intention or without infection. Now, in performing wound dressing, one important thing that I want you to remember is that this procedure requires sterile technique. I know this is the first time that you have heard sterile technique, and I'm going to discuss this simply and clearly. Okay, and before I do that, let us first have some review of the topics that we have discussed in the first week. Remember, we have discussed infection control or infection control practices or techniques on the first week. And we said infection control practices are performed by nurses and other healthcare personnel in order to prevent contamination from pathogens or simply to prevent infection. Now, in, in order to prevent infections, there are two techniques that nurses and other healthcare workers can perform. First is clean technique, and the second one is a sterile technique. Now, how is these two techniques different from each other? And how are these techniques important with our procedure this week? Let us first discuss what is clean technique. These are the techniques that you have been following since week one until last week. Okay? And the very purpose why you perform clean technique is to reduce the number of microorganisms. Take note of that term, to reduce. You are not killing microorganisms when you perform clean technique. You only reduce the number. And normally, we perform clean technique or we follow clean technique if you are going to watch, uh, if you're going to touch intact skin, intact mucous membrane. Intact means there's no wound. There's no opening. The skin, the mucous membrane are intact. And also, if you are handling dirty items. Now, if you are following clean technique, what are the things that nurses are usually doing? 
First, before you do the procedure, you wash your hands. And you have been doing this since week one. You either wash your hands or do hand rubbing. Then after you put on your uh, after you do your hand washing and after you perform hand rubbing, the next thing that you usually do is to put on a clean gloves, right? Okay? And in some instances you, you put PPE. What are these procedures that requires clean technique? I know you you can still remember your previous procedures wherein you perform hand rubbing and, and, and putting on gloves, right? For example, when you give injection, IM, subcutaneous, insulin, what did you do? You wash your hands and then you put on your clean gloves. When you perform NGT feeding, what did you do initially? Wash hands or hand rub and then clean gloves. The same also with oral care, checking a blood sugar and checking temperature. What are the things that you have done initially? You wash your hands and you put on your cleaning gloves. Again, those procedures require clean technique. So how is clean technique different to sterile technique? Sterile technique is primarily performed to eliminate germs entirely. Again, take note of the word that we use here, eliminate. When we say eliminate, we kill. We destroy all microorganisms, and that is the goal of sterile technique. Remember, in clean technique, we do not eliminate, we simply reduce. However, in sterile technique, we need to kill and eliminate them. And what are those instances wherein you need to eliminate germs and follow sterile technique? Okay, if you are touching wounds or non-intact skin, or if there's a break in the skin or mucous membrane, or if you are handling body organs or body cavities, okay? In those instances, you simply perform sterile technique. Why? Because you, the, the patient's mucous membrane and skin are broken. That means the microorganisms can easily get into the wound of the patient. That's why we follow sterile technique. Okay, in those instances, the most important thing that nurses should do is to perform surgical hand washing. I know this is also a new term for you, although you have been doing hand washing since week one. Okay? The one that you are doing is called medical hand washing. However, in surgical dressing, the hand washing that you're going to perform is surgical hand washing. And I'm going to discuss that later on on the next few slides. Aside from surgical hand washing, in sterile technique procedures, you are required to put on your sterile gloves. I know you can see a photo of the gloves there. And normally, a sterile gloves is enclosed in a sterile package. Unlike with the clean gloves, wherein it is just placed on the wall. It's just placed in a box altogether. Okay? Sterile gloves, it is more special. It is um, contained in a sterile package individually. Now, what are those procedures that requires a nurse to observe sterile technique? Okay, you would see a lot of listing on, this, on the slides. However, I just want to emphasize that surgical wound dressing is one procedure that requires sterile technique, which means you perform hand washing, surgical hand washing, and you put on a sterile gloves. Again, what is our goal here when you perform surgical wound dressing? You want to eliminate germs. You do not want microorganisms to get into the wound. Why? Because the patient has an open skin, the patient has a non-intact skin. Therefore, the sterile technique is followed for surgical wound dressing. Okay, so what are the most important preparations that you need to follow in doing the procedure? Initially, before you perform the actual wound dressing, the first thing that you need to do is to check for the physician's order. You check for the doctor's order. Is there an order for you to dress the wound? Okay? And number two, check nurse's documentation. Is it written in the nurse's chart? In the patient's chart, rather? Did the previous nurse perform dressing? Or did the previous nurse did not perform dressing? You need to check for that. These are the two documents that you need to check. Again, first is physician's order. 
after checking for the physician's order, you check for the nurse's documentation. Okay, here are some of the supplies and materials that you need to prepare when you perform surgical wound dressing. Although in the video later on, you will see exactly how these supplies and materials are being used by the nurse in performing wound dressing. The most important material and supply here is the sterile dressing set. You would see photo below the basic dressing set which contains gauze, which contains cotton and blue forceps and it contains also um, different colored bags. Okay, what else? You need to have two types of gloves here. You need to prepare clean gloves because you need to do that. You need to use that uh, when removing the old dressing of the patient. And you need to prepare another sterile gloves which you're going to use in the actual performance of the wound dressing. If necessary, you can also use mask but that is optional. Aside from that, there are additional supplies and materials that you need to prepare. You have adhesive remover. Adhesive remover is important because um, you will, you will be using this one in order to remove an old bandage. Remember, if the bandage is, um, is in the patient's skin, it is very difficult to remove and it might cause some pain to your patient. And to avoid pain, you apply adhesive remover. In the video later on, you're going to see how the nurse is using adhesive remover. Next is normal saline solution. Okay? And this saline solution will be used as a cleaning agent. Again, it depends on the hospital. Some of the hospitals are using normal saline solution. Some other hospitals, they have their own cleaning agent. And you need to ask that in your workplace. Incontinent sheet or incupad. What else? Hand hygiene solution or gel for you know hand hygiene. You need also additional supplies such as gauze or dressing. And most importantly, after you clean or dress the wound, you need to cover the wound. So microorganisms will not get into the wound. And normally, we prepare a commercially prepared wound cover called Nipur. Okay, now, you've already checked the doctor's order. You've already checked the nurse's documentation. The materials are ready. And at this point, you are now ready to assess your patient. In this procedure, you will be performing two assessment. The first assessment is performed the first time the patient, the nurse, go to the patient's bedside after the patient, after the nurse read the doctor's order. Okay, and the second assessment, you do this just before you do the actual wound dressing procedure. So, what are the assessment? components that you need to perform to your patient. First is allergies to cleaning agent. Okay? Why? Because some patients are allergies to certain cleaning agent. Okay? That's why you need to ask. Second is wound location and size. You need to ask the patient where is your wound and you need to check if the if the wound is medium, large or small because later on you're going to prepare the wound dress or the wound cover and you should choose the best size of the wound cover. Another important assessment are signs and symptoms of infection. As mentioned earlier, if the patient has a surgical wound, one of the most important nursing diagnoses that you can develop is risk for infection. So how do you know that the patient is having infection by assessing for signs and symptoms of infection? What are the local signs? Pain, if the patient is having pain on the wound itself, it could be a sign of infection. What else? Um, if there would be some inflammation or swelling on the wound itself, it could be a sign of infection. Or what else? Changes in the color of the wound, it could be one also. How about for the systemic sign of infection? Or systemic sign of infections? How do you assess for it? One of the most important assessment that we do is we check the vital signs. Specifically, we check for the temperature. If the patient has a fever, most likely the patient is having systemic infection. 
Okay, as I mentioned earlier, signs and symptoms of inflammation. Another one is presence of pain. You ask your patient if the patient has pain. Pain is a sign of, and uh, it's, it's also a, an important thing that you need to assess. Why? Because when you perform wound dressing, there might be some patients who cannot tolerate the procedure and it can cause some discomfort to your patient. In fact, in some hospitals, before they perform wound dressing, they give pain medication first to the patient. That's why one of your assessment is to ask the patient the last pain medication taken. These are the first set of assessment. The second set of assessment is performed after you remove the old cover of the wound. And what are the things that you need to do? Okay, the moment you open the wound, you check initially the appearance of the wound. Okay, check the appearance of the wound. The next is presence of wound drainage. Is there a wound drainage in the wound? We're going to discuss wound drainage in the next succeeding slide. Aside from the wound drainage, we need to check for exudates. Exudates are fluids coming out from the wound. Okay, These are fluids produced by the wound, and we will discuss it on the next slide. Another important assessment is odor. What is the smell? Normally, the smell of a healthy wound is fleshy smell. And normally, if the, if the, if the wound is infected, the odor is unpleasant. Okay, foul, unpleasant odor, that means the wound is infected. Next assessment would be approximation of the wound. Approximation means if the edges of the wound fits together. Okay, both edges are fits or close together. I'm going to show you photos later on about wound approximation. And next assessment would be check if the gauze is saturated or not. Saturated means if it is full of exudates or blood or not. Again, I'm going to show you how does a saturated gauze look like. Okay, as mentioned earlier, one of your assessment is to check for wound approximation. And I have mentioned already, you can check for wound approximation by looking at the edges of the wound. What can you see in the slide right now? The first photo shows that both edges of the wound are close together or fits together, while the photos on the other side shows that the edges are separated. The first photo indicates the wound is approximated, while the second photo shows that the wound is not approximated. How and why this wound approximation is important during assessment. Normally, a, a normal wound that is healing normally has a wound approximated. The moment the edges of the wound is not close together, that means the wound has infection. Wound exudate, as I mentioned earlier, these are fluids produced by the wound. Is there really a fluid coming out from the wound? Yes. Normally, as part of the normal healing process, certain fluids are produced from the wound. However, by just looking at the wound, one can tell whether the wound is normally healing or not by looking at the colors of the exudates. Okay, let's discuss one by one. Cirrosanguinous, you can see in the photos, it's a little pinkish. It's a combination of cirrus and sanguinous. That's why the color is a little bit pinkish. And normally, after a few days, after surgery, you would expect, you would expect um, a little amount of serosanguinous, and that is normal. The second type of exudate is called purulent exudate. And you would see that the color is green, brown, tan, yellowish. This is an abnormal exudate, and it indicates infection. Okay, that means the wound is not healing well. That means the wound is infected. That is purulent. Sanguinous, you might observe a brick red blood, okay, in coming out from the wound. Is it normal or is it abnormal? Well, a sanguinous exudates indicates an active bleeding. Is it normal? No. That means the wound is bleeding, okay? 
And if the patient is bleeding, it could lead to death. That means there's a problem with the wound, and it should be referred to the doctor. The four types of exudates is called zeros, and you would observe that the color is whitish, clear, thin, fluid, and a normal wound after several days should produce a zeros exudates. Again, by looking at the different colors of these exudates, you can tell if the wound is healing normally or not. As mentioned earlier, part of your assessment is to check for wound drainage or wound drain. Wound drain are devices that are attached adjacent to the wound. Okay? And these three are the common wound drain that you would observe if your patient has a wound. Why is it that the patient has a wound drain? As mentioned earlier, a normal wound normally produces a fluid we call as exudates. Okay. However, a large amount of exudate will cause delay of wound healing. That's why we put a wound drainage in order to remove, in order to drain those body fluid, blood, and etc. First is we have a hemovac. See, it's a small gadget. It's inserted um, near to the patient's wound. And normally you would expect some wound drain after several hours from it. And as a nurse, you need to measure how much, how much drain you have collected in your shift. The second one is called Penrose drain. See? It's like a small film attached um, to the wound. And you would expect some exudates coming out from the tip of the Penrose. Uh, yes, of the Penrose. The last is Jackson Pratt. Again, it's a, small, it's a small device. It is inserted adjacent to the wound. To collect excessive fluid or exudates coming out from the wound. Now, during assessment, you need to identify which type of wound drain the patient has. Is it Hemovac, is it Penrose, or Jackson Pratt? One assessment that you need to do also, as I mentioned earlier, is to check if the gauze or the wound cover is saturated. Saturated means if it is full of fluid, if it is full of exudates or blood. Observe in the first photo that the wound cover or the gauze is clean and not saturated. There is no fluid. There is no exudates. While the second photo you would observe that the wound cover or the gauze is saturated means it's a lot of fluid. It has a lot of blood. And during assessment, I want you to see whether the gauze is saturated or not. Okay, now after you do assessment, okay, we're going to per you're going to perform certain important procedures, okay, before you do the actual wound dressing. And normally you perform surgical hand washing after you perform assessment to your patient. And you will see this in the video later on. Okay, what is surgical hand washing and how is it different? From the previous hand washing that you have learned, remember in the first week, we taught you the proper way of doing medical hand washing. Okay, just like the medical hand washing, surgical hand washing is performed to remove microorganisms, dirt, or debris from the nails, hands, and forearms. Take note of this, nails, hands, and forearms. Remember in the first week, you only wash your nails and hands. However, in surgical hand washing, you include the forearms. This is the difference between the two. Okay, another purpose to reduce the resident microbial count to a minimum and to inhibit rapid rebound growth of microorganisms. Now, aside from the inclusion of forearms, one important difference between surgical hand washing and medical hand washing is that in surgical hand washing, when you wash your hands, your hands are held higher than your elbow as you have seen on the photo okay while in the previous surgical uh, in the previous hand washing that you did on the first week your hand was lower than your elbow right now why is the reason why the hand is higher than the elbow in surgical hand washing it's very simple see the rationale in this position the water runs from the area that now has the fewest microorganism to area with a relatively greater number. In surgical hand washing technique, 
the hands are the cleanest or has the fewest microorganisms and the elbow part has more microorganisms. That's why you never, ever lower down your hands. It should always be hands higher than elbow. Now, this is very, very important. After you perform surgical hand washing, you are now ready to go to your patient and perform the procedure. Okay, but you can do the procedure only after you perform sterile globbings. How does sterile globbings different from clean globbings that you have? In clean globbings technique, there is no special way of putting on your gloves. However, in sterile globbing technique, you need to follow certain procedures, certain steps, or else you will end up contaminating the gloves. Remember, our goal in sterile technique is to make sure that there is no microorganisms that would go in contact with the wound. And proper way of sterile globbing is one way of ensuring that you are con not contaminating the wound. So what is the first step that you're going to do? Of course, as I mentioned earlier, sterile gloves are enclosed in a sterile package. Correct? Now, after you perform surgical scrubbing, you pick or you get a sterile package of gloves. Open it. Okay? Normally, you will see an opening on the, uh, on the, on the, on the other side. Peel it off and expose the sterile content. That's the first step. Now, after you open the sterile package, you will see a pair of gloves. As you have seen in the first photo, there's a right and there's a left. Okay? And the first thing that you need to remember is start gloving your dominant hand. What is dominant hand? This is your hand that you usually use. Most people are right-handed. If you are right-handed, that means your dominant hand is your right. The rule in sterile gloving is to put on your sterile glove on dominant hand. How do you do that? If you are going to put on your gloves on your dominant hand, the first thing that you're going to do is to pick up the glove for dominant hand by touching the, uh, by touching the inside cuff of the glove. I want you to observe the first photo. The nurse is touching the inside part of the cuff. The nurse is not touching the outside part. Why? Because the nurse might contaminate the gloves, correct? That's why touching is inside the cuff. After that, on the second photo, you would see that the nurse inserted her dominant hand into the first glove by pulling the glove completely over the dominant hand. Again, without touching the outside part of the glove. Now, after you have completed gloving the dominant hand, the next thing that you're going to do is to pick the other glove and on the third photo you would see that the nurse is touching now at this time the outside part of the glove why is that so because the other hand is already gloved okay that means the nurse will not cause or will not contaminate the gloves anymore so the nurse insert the gloved hand into the cuff okay of the remaining glove and the left hand is inserted to the gloved hand and the nurse pulls the remaining glove on non-dominant hand. Okay? This is the proper way of performing sterile glovings. Okay, this is an important procedure that all nurses should follow in doing the actual dressing technique. Okay? There are three photos on the slides right now. And normally, when you perform the procedure, you will be using forceps, as I have discussed on the supplies and materials. Okay? In cleaning the wound, you will be using forceps. And in using the forceps, make sure that the lower tip of the forcep is what? Is facing towards the floor. Okay? And in doing the wound dressing technique, Itself, it is very important to use a separate swab for each stroke 
Why a separate swab? Why you can never use one swab to all part? Again, our, our um, goal here is to prevent contamination of infection. That's why we use a separate swab. On each stroke, we use one swab and discard it and get another one. Okay, so what is exactly the technique in cleaning the wound? In cleaning a sterile wound, it should always begin from the center and moving outward in circular motion. That means the first swab should be on the, fur on the center of the wound. I want you to see the first photo and it is numbered for you to be able to understand the direction of the swab. The first swab, number one, in one direction, okay, and then discard. For the second part, you get another swab and clean the other side and discard. To clean the other side again, number three, get another swab, one direction, and discard. Do the same with four and five. The second photo is another way of cleaning the wound, but still the principle says, begin from the center. That's why you would see the arrows starting from the centers, center, going outside. The principle is also applied if the wound is the same with photo number three. See? The swab, you know, the cleaning of the wound starts from number one in circular motion, moving outward. The question is, why cleaning of the wound should always start from the center? Okay, in an outward fashion in a circular motion. Why we should not start from outside? Why we should start from the center? Because the center of the wound is considered as the cleanest and the surrounding tissue of the wound is considered as dirtiest. We should always start from the cleanest towards the dirtiest. Okay? That's the reason why cleaning starts from the center and move outward in circular motion. Now, after cleaning the wound or after dressing the wound, Another important step that you should not forget is to evaluate. And there are only two important evaluations here. First is the presence of pain. Okay? After a few minutes, you go back to the patient and ask the patient is a pain, if the patient has a pain. The second one is you need to check the wound cover. Is it saturated with blood or it is not saturated with blood? Okay? Two things. Pain, saturation of the dressing. This should be included in your evaluation. And this should be also included in your documentation. Now, with all those details that we have discussed, this is now the right time for you to, to watch the videos that I have posted in YouTube. Okay, I have created a video for, uh, only for you. And I hope that um, you observe well the procedure because when you answer the worksheet for this week, most of the questions are derived from the videos. If you have not seen the videos, it would be very difficult for you to answer the worksheet. Okay? And you have two videos uploaded there, one for surgical hand washing, and one is for the dressing itself. However, in the actual performance, wound dressing, surgical gloves, and um, surgical hand washing are, you know, included in one procedure. Okay, so for our scenario, Mr. Muhammad Ali Muhammad Ali, 34-year-old patient, had an abdominal surgery days ago, and the order of the doctor is to perform surgical wound dressing, and your task now is to perform surgical wound dressing. Again, watch the videos well, and make sure to take note of the important points being raised by the nurse who is demonstrating the procedure. Okay? Make sure also to, to, to like the video and try to subscribe so that you will be updated to all videos that I will be posting there. Again, thank you so much and good luck with your worksheet.